Hello, everybody. My name's James. Welcome to another Planet FPL clash of the correspondence. And ahead of game week 25, we got two teams with a double game week. And our correspondents for both are now in the house ahead of Manchester United and Brighton and Hove Albion's double game week. Firstly, let me introduce you to our United correspondent, Gary Robinson. How are you, Gary? I'm very good. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you, mate. And our Brighton correspondent, Sam Murray's in. How are you, Sam? I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Good man. Thank you, mate. Right, Gary, do you want to talk about Ronaldo now, later, next week? Should we just get on with it. What's what's, um, what's going on? Yeah, it's just it's such a tricky one because it feels like, especially with the double with two home games, it feels like you can't not buy him or own him or captain him. But it's just, it's just not, it's just not right, is it? And said it a few times, and I think said it before the Watford game, you know, we talk about if City had bought him, and I think he'd have made City worse, and apart from his impact in the Champions League for us, like, I don't think we would have got through the Champions League group if we didn't have Ronaldo, but other than that, his impact on us has been just not, not really been there, and yeah, what do you do with him? I mean, I don't own him, and I'm in, I'm in such a state as whether to buy him or not. Um, but I, I don't think I will. But I wouldn't put anyone off him either. Um, you know, I mean, I suppose if you if you are thinking of doing it, he's had his rest yesterday. So it's unlikely. He'll, I think he'll start both, both of the double now and maybe get a rest in the Leeds game before Madrid. But, yeah, it's just... It's just not happening for him for for various reasons, but it's yeah. Um, I, I should clarify at this point we're pre-recording on Wednesday, which should yeah. be fine for the two of you. But when I bring up the name Harry Kane, um, it might be we're talking past tense here a little bit. I've just bought Kane instead of Ronaldo um, for game week twenty-four. Yeah, um, well, I, I which already which own... seems ridiculous looking at that double no, for no, United. No. Well, I already own Kane. Um, and I've captained him for the Southampton game. Oh, we might both look like pricks by the time this goes. Oh out. yeah, yeah, quite possibly. But but he's my ob- Kane to Ronaldo's my obvious route, you know, to, to a to a United captain the next week. But you know, I quite. I mean, I think I think you were saying James on one of your pods about Kane's run the fixtures. I quite like Kane's run the fixtures. I know I know Wolves are decent, but it's still a home game for Kane. Then it's a double, and I know it's a tricky double, but it's still two. It's still two games. Then it's Leeds. Then it's Everton. There's, there's weeks there where you think. I mean, conceivably, you could captain Kane for the next. Uh, forget Salah. You could captain Kane for the next three or four. No one's forgetting Salah, problem. mate. No, I know, but you know, <laughs> but you, you could you could conceivably captain Kane for the next few. The double's not great, but you know, Burnley bottom of the league or oh, ish. <clears> so even if he, a two point against City and a a 12 against Burnley, that's good captain. Mm-hmm. Leeds, Everton, you know, and I don't, I mean, everyone seems different, but there won't be many teams who can afford Kane and Ronaldo. And that's why I'm just thinking, I'd rather just leave Kane sat there, who, who looks like he's back at it. Spurs look decent, I Careful. think. Careful. <laughs> no, I know you're going to, I know you're going to say different, but I think Spurs... No, I'm just, the, just that we might have got beat last night by the time this goes out. Mate. Oh, I know, yeah. But even, even aside, I think, I think as it stands before the South, Spurs Southampton game, I think Spurs are favourites for the top four, for fourth spot. I just can't see the need to go uh, Ronaldo to Kane when you could get, you know, a Fernandez and Captain him or you know, or a De Gea, which I don't know, we, we spoke about last time about captain goalkeepers, you know, trying to wedge Ronaldo in, I, I don't know if it's worth it. If you've already got him, definitely captain him, not a problem. But if you haven't got him, I, th- I think you've got to swerve it, I think. Is he not, though, the best captaincy option in two of the next three game weeks? Admittedly, some people are going to free hit in 27, obviously. But if you're not, if you're running through, is he not the best captaincy in 25, and the best captaincy in 27 with Watford at home? Um, but, yeah, may, maybe. But I mean, Watford, Watford. you know, Roy Hodgson's not going to concede a ton, is he, at, you know, in, in week 27. Um, I don't think Brighton will. And I, I mean, Southampton can, can be quite flaky, can't they? But 
you know, Brighton aren't going to concede a ton either next next uh, midweek. You know, and and you know the thing about Ronaldo, he's not. He's what's he, I think he's on eight goals, eight league goals for the season. You're not you're not getting to, you're not getting someone who's guaranteed a massive haul. He's blanked in he's blanked in thirteen of his twenty games since he joined the club. You could buy him, and it could easily be a four pointer or a seven pointer. And if you've he's, already he's got not, him, he's not going to blank for seven games in a row, is he? Surely. I'm going to do the ads from Black Box here, but it's Ronaldo. Yeah, but he's been Ronaldo. He's been Ronaldo since we bought him, and what <laughs> you know what. You know what? What have we got? He's, he's, he's thirty-seven. This isn't this isn't the guy that that that, that ran Europe ragged 10, 15 years ago. This is the thirty-seven-year-old Ronaldo in a team that can't quite get itself together. And arguably, the times we've looked really good in the last few weeks has been where Ronaldo's not been on the pitch. Hmm. And I'm Sam. not saying it's all. Be, I'm not, I don't think it's because of Ronaldo necessarily, but. It might just be coincidence, but he's he's part of the big the problem the the whole. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Part of and the, when he's he's not the only when he, issue. No, no of course he's not. But when he doesn't play, we've we've actually shown some coherent performances together. Uh, first half yesterday, um, the Villa, I think the Villa match which which you missed the and we bottled the, it. The opening half hour is the best you played this season. Well, certainly since the Leeds game, game week one. The opening Last half night, hour. You mean. No, the opening half hour at Villa. Oh, at Villa, sorry. Yeah, but even last night we were good in the first half. Um, and yeah, so yeah, a, a tricky one. I think if you've got him, you keep him and you captain him. If you haven't got him, I think you swerve it. Sam, have you got him? I've got Ronaldo, yeah, and De Gea from United. Um, I think I'm just stuck with Ronaldo now, to be honest, for the next bit. I, I guess him... him uh, Resting or rotating for the for the Burnley game means he's more likely to play both in the double, I suppose. So I'm not sure if I if I can captain him against my own team, but yeah, he's a good option. You're going to, aren't you? Probably, yeah. I'm, I'm half tempted by De Gea, but I'll probably go for Ronaldo. Don't shake your head, Gary, because I've done it before, <laughs> and I think I'm going to do it again, mate. No, I know, but what did you get? Did you get two four points Eight. from him or something? Yeah. Yeah. It was better than Ronaldo's return, wasn't it? <laughs> what was uh, it? One, yeah, it one been... point, two points? Um, Villa and Brentford, wasn't it? Two points, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he got... Well, he didn't play at all against Villa, yeah. So I think he just got a two against uh, Brentford, yeah. Is this yeah. double better than that double, Gary? Um, It was Villa and Brentford away, now it's yeah, Southampton I think right think it's. Home. I think it's probably about the same. Because um, I think we're probably a better team away from home than we are at home. We have been for the last two or three years. Um, I'm not going to start winding everyone up, but I think, I, yeah, I think Villa, Villa are probably the best of the four, and Brentford might be the worst of the four. And then you've got Brighton and Southampton who are probably in the middle. So it's probably a pretty similar double, really. Um, and I guess with the Champions League complications coming up. Yeah, and a bit of rotation, but I think it's probably pretty much pretty much a similar type of double, really. Is it better to be at home for you at the moment, or is it worse? Do you think? I don't think so. I think we're a better team away from home. We have been, we have been for a while. We we were under Solskjaer. We we, you know, the, we we're better on the counter attack. We, um, they, I think the away supports better. You know, I think we've got quite a good away following. I think that you know we've 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 been pretty pretty poor at home since the fans have come back in um, so no I think yeah I don't think there's a lot in it do you think Sam who do you think scores more goals between now and the end of the season Ronaldo or Neil Morpé <laughs> um, um, wow and Ronaldo Ronaldo yeah surely Gary in in the, in the Premier League, is this? Yeah, yeah. just the rest of the season. Ronaldo or Mopé scores more goals. Rest of the season. Uh, I think probably Ronaldo, but given the fact that me and Sam have both <laughs> taken about 10 years to think about the answer, it tells you everything, doesn't it? Well, that's it. That's kind of why I'm throwing the, the question out there, because I suspect we're probably all going to go, well, yeah, Ronaldo, but yeah. why, are we, why are we even debating that? Ronaldo's got eight, Neil mopé has got seven, Ronaldo cost twice the price. Yeah. Sam, should Neil Mopé be... Uh, 
the man if people need to still sit in there with the likes of Dennis and Ken? Is that the way people should be going? Um, I don't hate it. I don't hate more pay as an option. That means you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I find it difficult to sit here and tell everyone to buy players like, you know, more pay at Trossard when so often I've, I bought them in myself and it's always, it's always seemed to burn me. I, I don't mind more pay, to be honest. I think he'll be, he'll be on probably back on penalties if growth is off the pitch as well. But it says a lot about our options, I think, in, in FPL. We're quite a strange team, I think. We have a lot of, we have quite a, a quite a good squad, which isn't necessarily great for FPL. I, players will be chipping in um, with goals. We've had McAllister chip in as well now, and Moda's getting more, more chances. So I think Morpay's still the main man, and with the fixtures coming up, at least up until 28, 29, you could probably hold him through there. It's, it's I don't, I don't mind it. That's what scares me. I think it's not that oh, I can go Morpay and I'm going to jump off him straight away. It scares me that he'll sit there possibly for weeks on end because following the double, uh, and I think because Watford away is the first game, it's it's still a very attractive double in spite of the fact it's two away games. Burnley at home, Villa at home, Newcastle away, follow it. Then there's Liverpool, then there's Man City. But as discussed on Monday's podcast, you might be putting them two fixtures together for a double. If you're then free hitting in 30, you don't need to worry about Brighton. And then it's bloody Norwich at home in 31, mate. It might sit there for seven, eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. It depends a lot on on people's strategies and their structure now because I'm not free hitting in 27. So if I was going to bring him in, we play in 27. So that it's not it's not a um, it's not a crazy idea to bring more pay in. But yeah, if you if you're going to hold him, you're probably stuck with him. It's not like there's too many options around like. There's, no one's really standing out up front. You've got you've got a few of the budget ones coming forward now, like like Veg Horse and stuff like that. But more pay's no more of a punt than them, I don't think. So it's it's not too bad. No, I'm in agreement. And I think you know, go back a few days ago, um, at the time of recording, we think Odson Edward is possibly not in the Crystal Palace team tonight. But that was all the rage last week. Should it be Dennis or King to Edward following Watford's catastrophic double? And those who held on, it's now, is it Dennis or King to, to Morpé? So I'll throw, you, I'll throw you a situation, Sam. I'm probably going to buy Mo Salah. I've got the money to do it. One free transfer, probably for game week 25. Is Morpé worth the minus four for any one of them Watford clowns? Um, see, I, I'm in a pretty similar situation. Prob- probably not because they the Watford... The, the Watford boys still have the double in 26. So that's what always, it's, it's difficult to get rid of them when, you know, they're going to be playing two games as well in 26. So for a minus four, probably not. But, but then, then, then Watford players then walk into mighty Manchester United in game with 27. Yeah. With uh, yeah. five clean well, sheets all season. <laughs> They, they did all right against United last time. So. <laughs> Gary, if I go into that, that fixture with the two Watford still there, it's definitely clean sheet number six, isn't it? <laughs> no, but it'll, be, it'll be another 4 1 and Ranjik will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, imagine that again. I know, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think the problem is with forwards generally at the moment is um, Kane feels like he's. Ob- I still think Kane's too expensive in spite of the fact I've bought it, um, but wanted what I thought was probably the best available captaincy option to myself at the time this week. But he's the only one of any of the forwards, basically, at any price, who's shown any sort of kind of, he might be about to show some form. Edward has had a little bit, but we don't know if he's going to be regular for Palace. Even in Morpay's case, is he even going to start twice, Sam? Well, yeah, that we've got three games in a week now. And I remember he was, the, the games he's missed this season, I think he was, he missed out away at Liverpool and against Chelsea as well. He didn't start. So the bigger games, maybe he's the Potter. I don't know. I, I, I don't like to try and predict Potter. It's, it's difficult, difficult enough. But I wouldn't be surprised like if he did if he did miss out in midweek. What went through your mind when at Tottenham in the Cup on Saturday, you've just gone 3-1 down, straight from the kickoff, Morpé goes through 1-1 one and, one, and he tries to ship Loris and he barely gets it up to knee height. What's going through your mind at that point? I laughed. It's one of them. It's, it was one of them games in general. <laughs> well, so I did I. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of them games for the whole team. Really, it was just 
just completely off it. Morpé has, I, I'm, I am a fan of Morpé and I do try and defend him. And, it, you know, one in one in four games, he'll have he'll have a game where he, he'll miss two or three chances and it's just not going his way. But I, I like him. I think he's been good this season. And yeah, I'd, I'd back him. I'd back him. He must be. He must be spending too much time with Danny Welbeck after his uh, Bayern Munich chip all them years ago. That's what it must be. <laughs> Trying to copy him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have backed Welbeck to score. I would, he's, yeah. he's a good finisher. Yeah. To be honest, you raise a very good point, though, actually, Gary, just by mentioning Danny Welbeck. Um, he obviously is available at the moment, yeah. and that's potentially an impact on more pay, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think Welbeck, we know what we've got with Welbeck now. He's not a player that we can rely on playing 90 minutes every week, but he'll come on here and then. Um, he, he's a different option completely, it seems like. And he came on at, uh, away at Chelsea, scored a header, came on away at Leicester, done pretty much the same thing. So he's a very useful player to have. And for games, for, for times now, we've got a few games coming up. Yeah, Welbeck can, can come in and I'd be happy with him starting, yeah. Yeah, that is the best stat for you that will sum up F, uh, FPL forwards at the moment. Jamie Vardy of the FPL forwards is still out in front with most goals scored with nine. He's only started one game since game week 14. Yeah. And still, still uh, Ronaldo's on eight, Dennis and Antonio eight, Morpay seven, Tony Edwards six, Watkins five, Lukaku five, St. Maximin five, Breuer five, and Kane five, Josh King five, but three wow. at Emma against Everton, so that doesn't particularly count. It's almost well, like, I... like that with Dennis and King, it almost feels like rather than taking the minus four for what for Morpay, it feels like it's a four pointer for Morpay and it's two points again for Dennis King. I'm better off not taking the hit. Exactly, yeah. You, you're reading out all them stats, and I'm wondering why I've been playing with um, three forwards for the last 20 odd game weeks. I'm not really sure not why I've still got Ronaldo, Antonio, and King, but yeah, but more pace. Pretty, I'd put them in the same same sort of bracket, really, as, as all those mid range strikers, yeah. Adam Eder is the future. So if not Ronaldo, <laughs> Gary, and for some, I, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in agreement with you. I think if you're in Sam's position and you've got him, for me, that's you captain him. Yeah, yeah. I think you get on with it, you captain him. But yeah. for a lot of people, obviously, haven't got Salah as well at the moment. Buying Ronaldo, if you haven't got it, surely it just becomes awkward, um, probably an awkward un- necessity at the moment to go that way. So, what about Bruno? He did the business in the last double. Yeah. I think, um, I think I'll be captaining, I think I'll be captaining Fernandez. Um, I think since Ranjik has uh, got rid of the 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. It feels like Fernandez has been a bit more involved. Um, he was unlucky again in against Burnley uh, to not get an assist um, from that set piece. Obviously, like you say, uh, ripped it up in the last double. Um, you know, Mr. City in the middles of the game. Things seem to be happening, uh, coming a bit more through him again. Um I think the, the the problem is, you know, to to Sam's point there is that the, the players that you want to sell really are strikers. So you, you you probably we're all probably got strikers out there going. Well, I don't want any of my strikers, so it's easy to go to Ronaldo. Whereas obviously to get to Fernandez, you've got to sell one of your midfielders, which we've probably all got five or four that we quite like at the minute. But yeah, I, I think I'll be captain Fernandez, and I think I don't think there's a lot else out there. It's not a week where you, you would look at it and go, oh, there's a single game week that I think can outscore a double. You know, I think if, you know, you know, City have got Spurs, haven't they? So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think... Uh, I've, I've, no, so City have got Norwich, haven't they? Sorry. In 25, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So I suppose if you've got a City player, you might fancy a Norwich player, uh, you know, a, a Norwich fixture over the two of them. But otherwise, like you say, even if you've got Salah, you know, will he play against Burnley? Burnley don't concede many. You know, I don't, you know, um, Kane against Wolves, you're not going to captain, are you? I don't think, over a, a, a double. So I think I think you've got to captain a doubler. So, I th- yeah, I think it's got to be Fernandez. Of, you know, but I don't, you know... I, Have you I got him or are you intending to buy him? I haven't got him, no. I th- I, um, but I've, I've got... I've, I've never spent my salary money when I sold him on... Boxing Day was it? Whenever the that fixture got cancelled, so I've got all that money sat there, so I can just go straight to Fernandez. 
and I could go straight to Ronaldo, but to go to Ronaldo, I think I'd have to sell Kane now, and which we just spoke about. I don't want to sell Kane. I think yeah. I think Kane unless think, he's got unless he's got injured in the Southampton game with Harry staying. I think. Yeah, so. yeah, no, but I think he might have. Um, yeah, I don't. You know, so yeah, yeah. But I think other than that, I think I think Kane Kane's got it within him in the next seven eight weeks to get you know eight or nine goals in him. Um, I'm in agreement. You know, and I've I've had Kane for I've had Kane for too long this season. I've had, you know, I've just, but I've got to the point now where he actually looks. Um, I think it was the Liverpool game where I thought, oh no, he actually genuinely looks. Uh, he looks back here. I think the and, system uh, helped in that particular game, and Liverpool were wide open to the counter. But no, I just, know, but but since since then he's he sort of ticked over. Hasn't the he? last he's, he's, yeah. couple of games, Leicester and Brighton, and actually yeah. even, the, even the defeat at Chelsea where he had the goal disallowed, he's just shot. Yeah, looks yeah. right back on it. Yeah, all, the, was, all the murmurings inside the club is and like, he, was, he feels back to his best and stuff. Was it and was it was it the Southampton game where he scored a penalty and had that one? That was about a millimetre offside as well, I think. You, That's you, correct. You, yeah. you know, so that that could have easily been a hole as well. He does have a good record against them. Why are we talking about yeah, that now? Yeah. It's out of date. Um, no, I take yeah, well, it. Yeah. I take yeah. it. Your plan, Gary, then is to buy Bruno this week and then move him straight on to Salah in twenty six. Well, I think I think I'm free hitting in twenty six, which is probably not. Wow. Yeah, I think I'm going to because I don't have Salah at the minute, um, and I'm. I'm convinced he'll miss one of either Leicester or Burnley, and obviously Blanks in 27. And I've got all, I've got every chip left as well. So I think I'm going to free hit in 26 to get Salah in. It's a and big then, thing. A free hit for one player is a big deal, mate. No, it's not. It's not. It's, you know, I can get I can get three Liverpool, three Arsenal. Um, I won't mind having one of the the Spurs attackers and then there's there's Wolves and uh, Rafinha and a don't, couple of don't others overlook Brighton home to Burnley in that single game week mate no yeah and there's some there's some good you know I think I've I think when I've been looking at it I think Bowen's got Newcastle at home hasn't he as well to be honest that's the point the single game week fixtures in 26 yeah. brilliant for just Start, one is, brilliant yeah. for everyone Villa have got Watford at home Brighton have got yeah. Burnley at home City have yeah. got Tottenham at home is decent Southampton yeah. have got Everton at home um, I just think, and yeah, I think one as well. I forget. Yeah, oh, West I just Ham think, and to Newcastle. Yeah, and I just think for me, but I mean, because what it would mean then is that the way my team's looking now, it would mean that I, I don't. When everyone else is going to free in twenty-seven, I wouldn't have to bother because I'd already have the three United. I'd already have a couple of City and uh, the Brighton lads that we'd probably get back onto. So I wouldn't need three in twenty-seven, and I've still got another. I'd still have another three eight on my wild card to use anyway, um, and I'm. You know, I think triple captain Salah, obviously, I don't think it's going to get better than that this season. But, you know, I'm sure De Bruyne or a Kane or whoever, I'm sure there'll be another a double coming up somewhere where you go, you know. And, you know, and the. <laughs> I'm not, Gary, don't make me talk you out of it now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I don't, no, I'm not. I'm pretty set on it now because I, I can't get back. I can't get back to Salah any other way apart from wildcarding. Well, um, well, why can't you just move Fernandez on Salah in 26? God, you want you want to see the rest of my team? I've still got I've, I've still got you know I've still got Jal Pedro sat there and uh, I've still nice. got Calvert Lewin and uh, yeah, but he's got a uh, double. Cal- Calvert Lewin needs to get in I mean, when get really oh Jal Pedro play. sorry yeah, Jal yeah, Pedro's yeah, Jal got Pedro. a twenty six double although he may not even play now as it stands well that's it yeah Saar so back precisely. as well when he didn't play yeah 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 precisely and Calvert Lewin I've got Alonso sat there so yeah so I'm. Uh, yeah, I think that's my plan. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's... I think... nah, listen, I think this year's all about alternative strategies. Yeah, mate. definitely, really yeah. yeah. Sam, uh, I'm going to assume if you've got Ronaldo, you haven't got Fernandez, or this is where you tell me that you're the whiz kid and you've set up really well for this. <laughs> no, I don't have Fernandez, no. Have you got Salah in at the moment or not? No, I think I'll be waiting until 26 for Salah. Just out of interest, how you plan to get there? Is that money you've got in the bank with someone yeah. else or...? Yeah, uh, money in the bank, and I've got two frees. And I think in 26, it will be Ronaldo and a. Uh, I've got uh, I've got Gray now. He's, he's injured, I think. So I'll be one of my midfielders out for um, Salah. So, and, so Ronaldo actually will be and, the full guy to get Salah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And someone who plays in 27, like uh, like Breyer Adam Eder, just saying, mate. <laughs> Stick it, sticking it out there, particularly if Breuer's not fit. If Breuer's fit, then 
yeah, grand. Otherwise, Adamido is the cheap one, I think. Suddenly, we'll get, all the forwards are so shit, we're going to go and buy a Norwich forward now. We get Ida to go with uh, King and Dennis and just leave it dead Perfect. all season. What do you think, Sam, if I said, my plan at the moment is to go Bernardo Silva probably to Salah this week. And I think there'll be people in similar positions where they're looking to move a midfielder on, go straight to Salah. My instinct at the moment, I think, Gary, you're right. I think if he starts against Leicester, I'd be worried about Sunday and I might put it off. My instinct at the moment is probably won't start against Leicester, does start against Burnley. And I'm thinking, I know I definitely want Mo. I don't really want Bruno long-term. I'll just go to Mo Salah. Or do you both think it would be worth going to Bruno first and then it cost him the minus four to get Salah in for 26? Yeah, um, I think this was... Because because you've got players as well. Like I think this this week I was thinking about the... Because I had two free transfers. I was thinking about like the, the whole premium the move from De Bruyne to Fernandes and then to Salah or just from Fernandes to Salah. And in the end, I went for Son. I don't know how I ended up there. Love that, but, mate. Um, yeah, I, I think with Salah, I think I can just you can just hold on until 26. I'm not sure what his ownership will be like in 25, especially if he doesn't start this week. I'm not sure if people will be rushing in to get him as much. I'm not really sure, but you can't go wrong with Salah. If you can get him in, 25, 26, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, can't you can't go wrong i'm just not sure it's worth getting bruno in first and the cost of the minus four first i'd see you shouting your head gary i'm just i'm just sort of wondering if you go straight if you go to salary in 25 who's your captain in 25 well that's the next question would... mate i'm going with dave saves aren't i again yeah i mean yeah i don't know you don't like it i can tell i don't you i don't but you didn't like it, it last time no i, well, I didn't I, no i can't get a I clean sheet was... this time am i well, we've only had five in 20... I think we've had 24 games. I don't oh, know no. why. Keep so, going. one in five. He, but he's Dave saves, doesn't even need clean sheets. Yeah, I mean, he, he, we, I think he's made the most saves of any Premier League goalkeeper this season, which just about sums us up. Yeah. Um, and I think he's about third or fourth for bonus points and all the rest of it. So, I think I think last time I said... You, the, the thing with him is he doesn't even have to get a clean sheet to get you a decent return, and which, which as it proved, I must have got you... Uh, what sixteen points did he? Yeah. Having not kept a clean sheet, so you know you you, you would take that probably again. But um, yeah, I would. Yeah, I mean, I, I would know. take that. I would take that now. The same as six and a two. Y- yeah, you would. Yeah, it's unlikely it's, to it's, be a six and a two with the Gaia. To yeah. be honest, because if there's a clean yeah. sheet, he's probably he's probably going to hit it'd ten or more, nine. isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but it'll be a nine and a one or yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm very tempted to go down that that route again. I'm not bothered about the whole. Oh, how can you watch it when your goalkeepers? Are? I'm not bothered about. I want United to get beat anyway. They're a competitor to me, so yeah. it doesn't bother me. Um, but I think yeah, that's where I'm going to go. Is that mad, yeah. Sam? The Gaia captain over even versus let's say Salah hasn't started against Leicester. Salah at Burnley or the Gaia in the double. Um. I'd be tempted. It's just the doubles, isn't it? It's, you get so drawn into the to the two games. Yeah, it's not it's not crazy. Even captain, even captain the Brighton player wouldn't be wouldn't be too crazy. Well, that was going to be the next question, mate, because I've got Leandro Trossard sitting now. Uh, you've obviously missed him and Alexis McAllister missed the game against Tottenham because of COVID. Potter thinks they'll be okay, and it's difficult to tell. Everyone reacts differently. But is he a shout? Is Trossard a, a cheeky shout for captaincy? Um, yeah, I, I think I think they should be okay after uh, I think yeah COVID. Keep an eye on like on the pressers for that, but I think he'll be fine. And if if he is fine, he will start. I think he's, he's a key he's a key player for us. Um, I've seen quite a few actually wanting to get rid of him uh, this week, and a few that got rid of him. I think if you've got him, you hold him for now, definitely. Uh, for a captain, yeah, it would be a, it'd be a punt. I think any. Midfi- any midfielder forward for Brighton is nothing more than a punt. And if you want a captain, it's a, it's a double game week. It's yeah, it's not too crazy. What do you think of that double when you look at it? Two away games, Watford, Man United. What's your expectations? Remove FPL for a minute. What's your expectations from them games? Well, um, I, I, I'm, I'm expecting two one ones the way things are going. <laughs> but um, yeah, we Watford away. Roy Hodgson's got better of us uh, in the last few games we played against him for Palace. 
it's going to be difficult. They seem to have, he seems to have fixed up their defence. Um, and two away games, you can't really, I can't really go and expect too much, but two draws or, you know, a win against Watford and whatever against United, two or three points. That's sort of what I'm, I, I mean, I'll take that as well, probably. Judging by the last double game where you won't even score in this, will you? If we, if we all go for Mulpe, if we all go for Mulpe and play, place one in Watford players, you won't even score, will you? You'll lose one nil <laughs> twice. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Stay away then. <laughs> um, should we be looking defensively then? Um, one of the most frequently asked questions I get, Sam, and I want you to answer it, and I might just clip this and play it on a loop. Is Joel Veltman nailed, mate? I've got the same question a few times. As well. <laughs> um, no, I, I can't say nailed. I, I would. Uh, he's so cheap. He's such. I still think he's good value, but he's he's not nailed. Uh, no, and that's the risk you sort of you, you sort of accept for the price. I do think he's more likely to start than not, but. If we see the lineup and it doesn't include Veltman, you can't be too surprised. I do think our defenders are priced pretty pretty well. You've got quite an option. I think there's a there's a defender there for everyone. To be honest, if you if you want a budget, and I mean Webster's still pretty cheap. If you can stretch the Webster to the Veltman, that's fine. And Webster is absolutely go, nailed, isn't he, Sam? I'd say so. Yeah. yeah. Even after his, his shocker in the cup, uh, I think I think he's I think he's nailed. And then uh, I've got Cucurella at the minute. I bought him in before the um, the other double, and he's been he's probably been our player of the season so far. He's been brilliant. Like a lot of players that join us, they take a while to set, settle in. He came straight in, and every single week, so consistent and technically brilliant going forward as well. So uh, I don't think he needs he never needs a rest. So for the extra money, you're paying for a nailed. Fairly attacking fullback, loves a bonus point. He got he a bonus point against Palace. We drew one all. Wasn't involved in the goal, and he, he still got he still mm. got a bonus. So, and even now, Lewis Dunk, uh, four point eight, I think he is now. Lewis Dunk coming back into the team without um, without Burn. Not that he was very good in the air anyway. And without Duffy, if he doesn't start, then you know Dunk's our main threat from set pieces. And we've seen before he's more than capable of getting a few goals. So. You've got the option if you want to spend a bit more on Kukrela and Dunk. And then also Webbs is fine at 4.4. Veltman, yeah, not nailed. So I, pr- I probably wouldn't go for Veltman. And you've missed off the flying machine, mate. Yes. Uh, Lamptey. Um, 4.5 million. I mean, we've got three games in a week. I don't. I can't see him playing three games in a week. I, I can't. The thing is, he he's so as lively as he is. His actual returns haven't been that anything special. I think this season, I think he's got one assist. Don't think he scored. So he he always looks good, and he almost plays as a right winger now. I think Potter, he's, he's in you know in his way of protecting him, he's kind of taken his defensive like responsibilities away from him a little bit and just said, use that pace. And against Chelsea, I mean, we played as soon as he came off the momentum switches every single time. He's so important, but yeah, in terms of FPL, you want, I think in a double game week, you want someone who you know is going to play twice. Um, yeah. Well, he, he never gets subbed off before 60. So it's a good option, but I think 4.5 for Lamptey or 4.4. For I think Webster. my outlook on it would be, I think Cucurella is the best option. Like if it's affordable and the money's not a problem, you can't yeah. buy him. I mean, I want to say he's played every, started every game for you, Sam, since he joined, I yeah. think. Um, yeah. He did play, he, I mean, the first start, you played two different systems on Saturday against us. He was basically left side of centre-back in the first half, then yeah. more natural left-back in the second half. Um, left-sided centre-back would be quite off-putting. Um, but he, it, as you say, he's a bonus magnet anyway. If, if a clean sheet comes, he's going to be in it, isn't he? It looks like. His BPS is um, 90 more. His actual bonus points is 90, 90 more than any other Brighton defender. Oh, um, wow. um, I know Dunk's obviously missed quite a bit of time, it's worth saying, uh, to add on to that. And so is Webster. Um, but I think he's worth the extra. There is the small possibility of the attacking return. But I just feel like if you win a game 1 0, he, he might just naturally be the, the 8 9 pointer in any case, it looks like at the moment. I think Veltman I would avoid. I just, I don't even know what system you're going to play, Sam. Yeah. Um, well, um... 
Go on, Gary. I was just going to say, what do you think to... Um, it's not a, a spectacular bit. What about Moda as a 4.5 midfielder? Because you've got, you've got... How many more doubles have you got? You must have at least one with the Spurs game to come. Uh, I'm yeah, just thinking... I- we definitely yeah, got a, one. We got another one, maybe towards twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking for a four point five midfielder, he's, he's sort of playing in a playing a ten role a few times. I mean, the returns aren't there, are they? But just sort they of should, just sort of stash. Yeah, but if you just sort of stash him away on but your he, bench he, instead he played, of still, I think he he's, played been, full he's been really important. He's been really important recently, and yeah, like you're about to say, I think he played. Um, Almost as a striker against Chelsea. Was it Chelsea game? Yeah, I think it might have been that. Yeah, one. yeah. yeah so him, right. and, him and McAllister. Him and McAllister have been brilliant recently. But I think now we've got Basuma and Lalana coming back. Um, I, I would play. I think I, I I would start Moda, but yeah, you've got Lalana, Basuma. You also got Alzate competing as yeah. well. Yeah. So I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about the midfielders. It's quite difficult to call. I think Basuma like, starts every week, but. We, sure. we, yeah. we, we, we'll ask Sam then, quick one for clarity. So if you were wild carding now, Sam, Moda or Jacob Ramsey at Villa for 0.1 more? Um, I think I, I, I think Ramsey's the best at that price. I think just about, yeah. Well, I think with him, you got the guaranteed starts, even if he might be playing a slight a deeper role now. And they've got yeah. good fixtures, Villa. Admittedly, no doubles as it stands at the moment in the immediate. Um, Moda in and out of the team. I think so. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't see him as a regular starter. Um, I think from the the cheapies, the kind of for you defensively, Sam. I think I'd go Webster from that Webster uh, Lamptey kind of price bracket. I'd go Webster as in terms of lots at the moment. Play him in the double, and then depend on what I've got. Either start him or don't start him for the remainder. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. And they rotate like like I've got uh, Ben White at Arsenal as well, so it kind of um, they kind of rotate rotate quite nicely then. And I'm not, I'm not too sure, like you said, about the formation. We're, we're so flexible with our formation. It changes in, you know, in possession, out of possession, game to game. And I think the, the, the takeaway is I think that Lamptey will be more advanced than Cucurella, whether it's a back four or sort of a back three. I'm not really sure. It'll be interesting to see what we do now. Uh, Dunk's back, I think. Uh, is it? I'm really pleased that you mentioned the Arsenal combination because there will be people listening with Sanchez and Ramsdale. Um, one of the stranger questions I had this week was, should I sell Sanchez? Um, I get it because obviously you had a blank fixture, but um, the partner in crime was Ramsdale. I was like, just play Ramsdale at, at Wolves. It's fine because you're looking at Brighton double, Arsenal double, Brighton cover you 27. Then we think Arsenal double. And as I said on Bundy's pod, it might even then be Brighton double and then Arsenal to cover you 30. And then you take your pick again uh, from game week 31. You've obviously got Norwich. Um, or, or do you actually play Arsenal in? Or you play Arsenal in thirty-two? You play each other. And thirty-one, we even spoke about, could even possibly be a double for Brighton as well, because these loose Tottenham fixtures might end up going anywhere, particularly mm-hmm. if Tottenham make the FA Cup semi-finals. So I think, yeah, Sanchez Ramsdale is kind of ideal. Would you consider that, Sam, if you were sitting there with like a Ramsdale and a Foster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Sanchez and Ramsdale's um, a pretty good combination, really. Sanchez is consistent and like you said, like the, the fixture rotation works really nicely. And same with a Brighton defender or or you know Ben White or Tierney or something. Yeah, I like I like both of them. I think that's a really good one potentially for people to consider. Because obviously Watford double in 26, but unless you're bench boosting, obviously Ramsdale doubles in 26 as well. So I think Foster to Sanchez, if it's affordable, he's a really interesting one will carry you through uh, the problem, particularly if you're not if you're out of three hits, that's a great one to to carry you through through for a few weeks. Uh, Gary, defensively, is it Dallow or nothing or just nothing? Or Yeah, I think it's uh, it's Dallow or nothing. Yeah, he's 4.4 or maybe 4.5. No, I'm not sure. Um, he's he's in our best 11. Uh, whether you... I'm not saying... It, 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 there'll still be rotation, especially with Wan-Bissaka and Champions League. Um there's no one else there you can you can you can consider everyone else is five million plus. Uh we're we we still look a bit of a mess defensively. Um especially well, not a mess, but you know, we don't we, we always concede one or or more. Um yeah, there's 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 nothing else to talk about defensively. Uh yeah, it's De Gea and Dalo and and forget it. Is he is he 
what's happened to Wan Bissaka? Where, where are we at with that? Is Dallo... Well, I think I don't think anything's happened to him. I think you've just got. Um, I think the 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 downside of him has always been, and as good as he's been in the tackle and the rest of it, the downside of him has always been that he doesn't offer you anything going forward, and not not the uh, the levels that United are supposedly trying to get to. You know, if you compare him to a Trent or a a Cancelo, it's, it's you know it's 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 not even close, is it? You know they're absolutely they're almost playing a different position to him. You know they're at, they're they're different grit. You know he's just not and Dallo's not. I mean Dallo and I'm not saying Dallo's anywhere near the level of them, but he's nearer going forward than than Wan is. And um, the, the the fullback role has become you know pretty vital, hasn't it? The last sort of five ten years and and Wan I suppose a bit of a throwback, isn't he? He's, he's almost He's really good defensively, but there's nothing there going forward, really. Um, so I don't think anything's happened to him. And I think I think you've just got Ranyakus come in, a new, probably a bit more of a with a more modern philosophy than Solskjaer had, and just you know just fancy someone who can actually provide something going forward. I don't think I don't think it's a a slight on Wambasaka's performances. It's just the, the their skill sets really. Any love for any of the kind of differential midfielders? Pogba, Sancho, Rashford, Elanga. Any love for any of them? I think... Even I don't if it's think, short term. I think short term, I've only got... I've sort of been in an about United and I've, like I said, just said I've, I've got all my chips left. So I have been messing around with three hits and wild cards. There's only... I think there's only... Apart from Fernandez, the only other two midfielders you consider is Sancho, if you really fancy a real pun in terms of uh, there's glimpses that he's sort of getting himself settled there. Um, He looks better on the left wing to me than he does on the right wing. So we're going to end up with, (laughs) you know, uh, three or four wingers who want to play wide left, wide wide right again. And I think Ilanga you can consider just because of his price at 4.8 gets you a double maybe but I don't think he'll I don't know if he'll play he, won't, he, he certainly won't start both of the doubles so you know then you, you end up hanging around with him and it, it, it might block you off as well if you want a De Gea yeah. and a Ronaldo or a Fernandez we haven't got room for Alanga so yeah I think not, ri- I don't not think really I think anyone no. wants free United beyond this game right Gary as it's well look, that's <laughs> what I'm saying no that that's true yeah so, you, yes, so if you want a you could just sort of stash Alanga away, sort of similar to what I was thinking about um, Moda, really, that you could sort of stash him away as a four-point-something fifth midfielder for the rest of the season type thing. But for this double, it might do you, you know, and, you know, Brighton have obviously got another double and uh, I don't know if we can get another double now this season, but... Um, yeah, you can. Yeah. Well, we can we're, because we're of... relying um... on someone else, will we? Yeah, I, well, game week 33, you're locked in with Norwich. Obviously, you're scheduled to play Liverpool in game week 30. So, at the moment, you'd fancy that would be off. Um, yeah. And you're actually scheduled to play in game week 37, Chelsea, uh, which is the same date as the FA Cup final. So, right. that, that could stay within the same game week, but it could yeah. get brought forward to game week 36 yeah. um, and give you a double. Um, not that it would be any more attractive. In game week 36, looking at your fixtures, who have you got? Go on, Sam. Tell us. You got Brighton away in game week thirty six, Gary. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> we could we could be think, back again. Uh, when was, <laughs> was so it's not going to look better than this one for no, a United double specifically. No, I get. I guess Sam would have been. Was it? It must have been about week 36, 37 when we played you about three years ago when, when you beat us one nil. I can't remember. Oh, the scored. Friday night game. The Friday night football. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah and you yeah. stayed up that day. Yeah, yeah, that must have been late on in the season. Who did score? Was it Gross? Wasn't gross, yeah. was it? Was it gross? Yeah, it was. Pascal it was gross. A head, yeah. It was a header that was just over the line, went to goal line. Chris Smalling yeah. trying to clear it off, I recall. Um, yeah, what, yeah. About, what about Pascal Gross, Sam? Um, well, I, I, I like Pascal Gross. I think in our in our Premier League era, he's he's one of my favourites, but I think we're, we're starting to outgrow him a little bit now. I think the way we play slows things down and 
now we've got Lalana. I think it's one of Lalana and Gross that starts, and Lalana is, is probably the better option. I want to tell you a true story from Saturday, Sam. That when he dropped the old uh, left foot reverse Cruyff turn, and the whole of the away end went way because they know that he does it all the time. Even I went a little bit way <laughs> because I, I knew it was year. coming as soon as he went across it with his left foot. I went, he's going to do it, and he kills yeah. everybody with it every, every single time. time. Best bad foot Cruyff turn in the Premier League by absolute <laughs> miles. Um, and before we finish up, Sam, word on McAllister. He's cheap as, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah. I like I like McAllister. Um, I think he's the type of player that if, if he was if he was playing every week, he'd be he'd be such a good option in fantasy football because he's so direct and he loves a shot. And I, a bit uh, recently, because of we've had no Lalana and Basuma, he's been playing a little bit deeper and. It's actually worked quite a lot better than I thought. Um, I think his aggression makes that, you know, he's, he's, he was a quite a good fit. But uh, I think he might start playing a little bit further forward now. Again, it's, it's three games in a week and we've got so many players that can come in and out. But he has been important recently and he, he's not bad. He's not bad. I, I like him. Probably not for, I probably wouldn't go for him in, in FPL though, just because of the, the rotation. No, but it's possibly a short-term facilitator. Again, yeah. I probably wouldn't expect him to play twice. It's kind of around that sort of Michael Elise value at the moment. Martinelli as well. I think both of them probably look better options at the moment, but the, the double always attracts. Um, the, the problem with investing in your players, Sam, is I think out the other side of 25, I don't want to get rid of them because of them fixtures, what I we said about with more pay. They might end up hanging around for a while. So I'd rather go in with someone like Cucurella who I'm quite happy with. I'd kind of said that I've kind of committed to having Trossard until game week 28, till Graham Potter tells me on Friday that he's out with COVID, in which case I'll probably be moving him on, obviously, rather than, say, Bernardo Silva. Um, who would you say, Sam, with, say, 80% confidence for your team will play twice? Um, As in start twice? Well, yeah, well, it's probably... You probably look at defence. Sanchez, Cucurella... Obvs. Dunk Webster, yeah, um, Basuma. Uh, he was so good on Saturday, mate. Yeah, he he is he's world class. I I think anyway. Yeah, we we miss him so much when he doesn't play. He's just yeah, he he really is brilliant. He will start both, and uh, I'd like I'd like to say more pace starts both, but then it get, it just gets tricky. That's why I just I can't get excited about any of our any of our players because any of our forwards anyway and, and, and midfielders because you just can't be sure and like you said I don't want to be stuck with them so I think if, you, if you're targeting a defender or, or Sanchez that's fine more pay as a punt is is okay but outside of that I'm not too sure Trossard give me some confidence Sam yeah yeah you've got him so if, you, if you've already got him that's fine Trossard <laughs> is Sam's also saying it, don't buy him is what Sam's saying, catch, I think. He's, he's down to six million now. That's not too bad. Six million isn't bad, but... I think it's decent uh, value. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if he, if he comes back in and you get that, that form that he, he can get in where he's unplayable, then yeah, he, he's, he's good. But if, if you haven't got him, I don't know. He, he's a good option. It's the same thing with Trossard and Morpé, I feel like, every season. And if you come back to this every week and, you know, Trossard and Morpé, and I'd have a different answer. I think it just depends on what your team's looking like and how how risky you want to be and how much you got in the bank. But yeah, they'll both be punts and they're not too bad. Sam, when you're next on, mate, we'll come back and we'll, we'll ask the same questions again because people yeah. keep asking them, mate. <laughs> no, Joel Veltman is not now. Gary, I won't ask you the same question um, because actually I think there's something quite unique about this double, which is interesting for Manchester United. You're going to pick your strongest team in both games, aren't you, I think? And I think that's purely because... You got the four day gap from Burnley to Southampton, three days to Brighton, and then five days till Leeds. It's quite unusual that you get nice spacing falls for a team that's got a double game week in the middle. It leads me to think that you'll go with. I'm not saying it won't be one or two changes, but I think largely the majority of the players will will start twice, won't they? Of the yeah, the, elected eleven, they the, the, the should do. Yeah, and um, given how congested that battle for top four has become. Um, we, we we've got we've got we've got to get six points from these two home games. Not you know Brighton, Southampton are sort of mid mid table sides. We, you know we, then we've got Leeds after that. We can't. We we've it's got to be it's got to be at least seven points given how tight that race is. 
Um, because you know, it, so yeah, so I think you're right. He's got he's got to pick his stronger side, especially for the two home games. He's just got to because if we can get if we can get some points on the board and scoreboard pressure, then it it it'll put pressure on the likes of Spurs, Arsenal, West Ham. It, you know, if because if we start giving if we start giving these other teams a chance, you know, it, very quickly it slips away from us. I think when you go to the Etihad in game with 28, you want to make sure that you're fourth, even if you're only narrowly fourth, I think. I think that's got to be the target. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because, yeah, we've, we've got a decent record in the Etihad, but yeah, the way we're playing at the minute, yeah, you wouldn't fancy us to get anything there. But I've said that for about the last five years and we've somehow dragged a result from somewhere. But yeah, we, we, we need to... I mean, I, I keep hearing that this is one of the sort of the best Premier League seasons of all time. I think the, the standard's pretty dire. And the, the fact that we're, you know, we, we're in a battle for fourth, it, yeah, it just beggars belief, really, given the money we spent I, on I, it. I agree with the same for my own team. I can't believe that we're in with a shot of it at the moment. Well, yeah, it's, you know, you, Spurs, Spurs have sacked a manager and Harry Kane's got four, what did you say, four five. goals, five goals, and you're, I think you're. I think you're the fourth best team in the country. You know, Arsenal. Arsenal. Are, you know, they've just sold their best player, and they're they're still in the shout. West Ham are in the shout. You've got teams down the bottom who've got. You know, I mean Norwich. We are, it was only three four weeks ago. Everyone said Norwich might be the worst Premier League team of all time, and as it stands, they're not even in the bottom three. Are they? Or <laughs> you know, they, they might they might be now. I don't know what's happened after last night's results, but you know. So I, I think the standard's pretty poor and. Yeah, for us to have gone from second to battling for fifth and sixth, just yeah, staggering really. So yeah, he's got to pick his best team for the next. Well, I think he he's got. He to definitely pick his best does team. for the double. Obviously, then between the Leeds and Watford games, you've got obviously Athletic. Is it Athletic Madrid you've got in the Champions League? Yeah, Athletic Madrid. Yeah. So, so then you can see the rotation possibly. I, I note the Watford fixture in twenty-seven is three days after Athletic Madrid, which. Might be off-putting for a few who are thinking Ronaldo captain in twenty-seven possibly, uh, but I think for the double, I like, think I, I, I'm yeah. I'm really confident Ronaldo starts twice. Do you have any doubt about that? For example, no, I think I, I, I think don't. he's I think he's I think he's almost certain to start both in the double, and I think he'll play Atletico Madrid and Watford, and I think he might be the Leeds game. I mean, I agree. Ran, Ran said last night before the game about oh, we need Cavani into. Harry and chase and, and run about, which was, I mean, Ranić's he's very honest in his interviews, which I don't know how long that'll last. But so I'm not saying Burnley and Leeds are similar side; they're not. The styles are very different. But in terms of needing someone to run about and Harry, you probably need that again in the Leeds game. Um, I mean, I mean, when's Leeds game now? I mean, Cavani might be injured again by then, given his injury record. But I think if you were planning it now. I would say Ronaldo might miss Leeds and play play four of the other five, given that he had a rest on yeah, I'm in the Burnley game. So that's the opposite between 26-27. You play Leeds Sunday, Athletic, Athletic Coventry Wednesday, Watford Saturday. So then that period yeah. is really condensed. You think yeah. Ronaldo definitely plays at Athletic. I agree with you. I think the Leeds game. Um, but then there's a case to say, what, five days from Brighton to Leeds, shouldn't you just put your best player on the pitch? I mean, he is still part of United's best team, isn't he, Gary? Tell me that at least. Who Ronaldo? Yeah. Um. Oh wow. Well, that is that I mean, is the intro. I don't. <laughs> I, I just. I just. I don't. I don't know if he is. I think his his returns look all right and his stats will look good, but I just. I don't know if we. I don't think we're necessarily a better all round team than we were before we bought him. And I said it last time. I'd have loved. I would have absolutely loved to have seen what Pep Guardiola was going to do with him because I just cannot. Given the way City have played this season with you know, Sterling or a Grealish or a Foden or De Bruyne or whoever up front or false nine or whatever you want to call it, and how flexible they've been and and Bernardo Silva playing really well and all the rest of that, I'd love to have seen what they what he thought he was going to do with Ronaldo. Unless you're just going to say you wait in the between the penalty area and just finish all these chances we create for you because I just I can't see how it would have worked and obviously Guardiola presumably would have made it work but I can't for life me see how he would have done Fascinating Let's uh, begin to wrap this up guys Let's do some quick fires first <laughs> Gary if you get a penalty on Saturday who's taking it? Um, 
Well, I would hope Fernandez would take it, but <laughs> uh, I suspect Ronaldo might take it. Sam, same thing. Get a penalty on Saturday. Who's taking it? Um, probably more pay. Not gross. He's on the pitch. I know he's obviously against Palace. Yeah. I hope not. Um, I, to be honest, Goodness. I don't have faith. In, I don't have faith in any of our um, of any of our penalty takers. Well, if gross on the de- pitch, maybe, but. De Gea can't, can't save him anyway. So to be fair, it. Dean Henderson won't be saving it either while no, I watched no. last Friday night. Mate. No, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, how many doublers, Gary, from the two teams will you have, do you think, in your game with 25 team? Uh, well, now Sam's put me off Stashy Modra away for the rest of the season. <laughs> probably. Probably four. I'll, I'll probably, I'll triple up on United. Because uh, of the twenty seven thing and and all the rest of it, uh, and I'll make a decision on a, a Brighton player, probably Cucurella or Morpé. And who would a free United be? As it stands, it will be De Gea, Dallo, and Fernandez. Okay. And Sam, same question to you, mate. Uh, I've I'm going to have De Gea, uh, Cucurella and Ronaldo, just the three. I think it will stay with that as well, and I'll I'll move on and focus on the, the bigger, shinier double game weeks after, I think. I think it's going to be De Gea, Dallo, and Trossard for me. I feel like I'm losing, um, but that 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 armband, Gary, on uh, Dave saves, mate, it's, it's what's going to make the difference, mate, when Pascal Gross steps up to take a penalty next Tuesday night. That's it. I'm yeah. in, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's do correct score predictions, before we finish, guys, uh, Gary for the Southampton game. Southampton three-one uh, to United. Okay, interesting. And for the Brighton game, uh, Brighton we will win two-one. So another five goals, and you're telling me no Ronaldo, <laughs> and he's going to start twice. Mate, come on. Let's yeah, go and get no, him. you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you go and get him. I'm, uh, I'll give it a miss. I'm not, not, not going to. I, 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 I said I said I wasn't by Ronaldo last time, and then I, I, just, I end up I don't like, to buy him. I don't like the pain. I just like seeing the pain to my FPL rank completely. I know, dying, yeah. Um, I Sam, the Watford fixture. Um, I feel like I never predict us to win. Uh, I'm going to go for a, <laughs> don't say a it. nice. <laughs> Oh, I, can't, I can't say 1-1. One, one. I'll go for a nil-nil. <laughs> please, 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 please and the United game? I agree. 2-1, May United. Okay, interesting. Um, I am... Uh, well, I'm going to bet you to win both games 2-1, I think, Gary. I'm going to go for, I think. Yeah. Um, yes, and I'm still going to captain De Gea, but I'm... I'm I think that's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go 2-1 both games, I think. Although, if Breer's unavailable for Southampton, I might change that to a 2-0, maybe. Um, I'd fancy Brighton, the way they played at Tottenham, and, and they weren't good defensively, but still very much a threat with the ball. I think Brighton will score Tuesday um, if you give them the opportunity on the ball, and I'd expect them to have a lot of it. Um, actually, I'm going to go the same as you, I think, Sam, and say 0-0 at Watford as well. Um, just because Hodgson, yeah, that's it. stingy as, and uh, you both both of you against a low block can potentially be a problem in terms of finding a net. So I'm going to go two one United twice and a nil nil for Brighton at, at Watford. So I, I, no clean sheet for United, but I'm going to captain De Gea. Right, that makes loads of sense. Cool. Uh, next week, guys, Clash of the Correspondence. There's two episodes for you Tuesday. Liverpool versus Leeds with Dan Lord and Andy Martin. And on Thursday, Arsenal versus Wolves with Adam Pritchard and Bradley Parker ahead of double game with 26 for all four of those teams. Before we let Gary go, where can they follow you on Twitter, mate? Uh, at is my cat playing. And for yourself, Sam? At FPL Seagull. Thanks so much, guys. Very best of luck for the double. Good luck to game with 25 to all the listeners. Cue music, please, man, child.